Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and graduating students. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Carol and Kevin Shanahan for the awards of Honorary Doctor of the University. Carol and Kevin Shanahan founded Synectic Solutions together around 25 years ago and now employ over 350 people at their Hamel Road site in Burslem. Kevin graduated from Staffordshire University in 1972 with a degree in computer science before spending a further year as president of our student union. After leaving the university, he worked in IT sales and sales management covering most aspects of computing for several companies, including British Leyland. Carol left school without any qualifications, but through sheer grit and determination, found a job as a mainframe computer operator with Hoskins Systems. She eventually went to work for CMC on the British Leyland account, where she met Kevin. And as they say, the rest is history. In 1992, Kevin and Carol founded Synectic Solutions, based on the principle of putting people first, delivering highly tailored solutions to meet client needs. Kevin's experience allowed him to see the huge opportunities that would be opened up by the appropriate analysis of very large data sets, which enabled the couple to build an organization that is at the forefront of leading edge data management and software development. In 1995, the company piloted a local government fraud protection project for several London boroughs, which developed into the National Fraud Initiative. This is a big data solution which helps prevent fraud and various forms of financial crime for both companies and the UK government. The principle of putting people first, whether it is in business, looking after their staff and customers, or as part of the community working with local charities, is central to Kevin, Carol, and the company. And indeed, I've learned that this afternoon, they will be holding a tea party for all members of their uh, company and have invited students who've undertaken placements, such as uh, their willingness uh, and ability to share their success this morning with the company. The support for Staffordshire University has enabled 28 students to take up placements with the company in the last five years alone. Kevin said, and I quote, Staffordshire University has played a crucial role in the success of Synectic since our incorporation almost 25 years ago. We initially chose to locate the company in Newcastle under Lyme in large part because of the favorable proximity to a very high standard of IT graduates from the university. It has proved to be an astute decision as 25% of our current senior leadership team joined us from Staffordshire either as placement students or immediately after graduation. At Staffordshire University, we are committed to providing our students with high quality work experience opportunities, and we very much look forward to continued working with Carol and Kevin and Synectics to achieve this. This joint award from Staffordshire University recognizes the long-standing success of your North Staffordshire-based business Synectic solutions. Your impactful work on the National Fraud Initiative, a big data solution to help combat fraud for both the UK government and multinational organisations, and as supporters and employers of Staffordshire University students and graduates. Vice Chancellor, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and graduating students, it gives me great pleasure to introduce Carol and Kevin Shanahan for the awards of Honorary Doctor of the university. He's first. I've just got a few notes. <laughs> I'd like to first of all thank Guyon for his very kind words. Uh, there's a sort of bit of formality now. So it's Vice Chancellor, fellow, fellow academia, honoured guests, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow graduates. I'd like to welcome you all here this morning to listen to us. Thank you. Uh, 
I think it goes without saying almost how honored Carol and I feel about this award and being here today. <coughs> it's not something we ever envisaged and we had a very hard few months when we were told that we, could, uh, we were gonna get this award but we couldn't say anything to anybody and being naturally gobby and speaky people, that was extremely difficult. More so for Carol than me. <laughs> it's true. Uh, I'm speaking first, not because I'm the most important, but Carol always has to have the last word. <laughs> this little talk is about change. Change. Uh, I think when I listened to the Vice-Chancellor speak, she stole most of my good lines as it happens, but there you go. Uh, my granddad was born in 1879 and died in 1972. He went from the only transport really being a bike or a horse. He lived through cars and aeroplanes and even lived to see a man on the moon. Now that's a fair amount of change, isn't it? But it ain't nothing to what we're going through. Uh, if you think of change, I came here in 1967 to uh, do a degree in computing science because really my dad thought it was a good idea and computers might be a coming thing. When I came here, I'd never seen a computer in my life in any form. So it was a lot of faith, really. Uh, when I got here, there had been no graduates gone through the system. I think there were 12 in the first year who were then out on their placement year there was 50 in the year above us, and I think there's about 100 in my year. So uh, into the unknown, I think. Uh, I did a, an industrial year placement in London, working for the GPO, the older amongst us might remember that. You, you younger ones would better know it as the post office and BT now. Uh, I did my, came back to here to do my final year, and then spent a year as president of the Students' Union, stirring up whatever I could. Uh, and I finished in 72. Uh, I realized that I was a bit too restless to go into a normal office job, so I started selling. I sold adding machines and all sorts of things in between until my final job was a, what had been a startup on the west coast of America. Uh, and some crazy people have this idea about a machine that would handle huge, huge amounts of data. So uh, a company called Teradata. So that's who I... I, I, my last job was with them for a few years, uh, and, and I saw, saw the huge opportunities that were gonna come down the line about the use of large, large, large amounts of data. Change, change again, change is the theme. Change always brings opportunity. So in a moment of minor madness, Carol and I started Synectic Solutions in 92. Uh, in a little room in Newcastle under line, which we rented by the month. Uh, so when it all went wrong, we'd just disappear and go back to proper jobs, you know. Um, first job we did was for Rover Cars. We built a marketing database for them. It's impossible to believe that any organization doesn't have a marketing database today, but they didn't. Uh, Liz mentioned the uh, National Fraud Initiative. This started in 95 as a little pilot, we worked for the audit, we did some work for the audit commission, and we had half a dozen inner London boroughs who thought that if they shared some data and looked at each other's data, they'd be able to find people doing things they shouldn't do, people who were claiming housing benefits when they'd got a student grant. In those days, there were things like student grants, lucky days, really, I think. Um, You're just rubbing it in, aren't you? I am, yeah. <laughs> it's the advantage of being old. Um, so, uh, this, this was successful at finding fraud, quickly went to all 33 London boroughs, and there are now 1,300, 1,300 authorities, councils, national health, all sorts of things, government departments that contribute to them and use this national fraud initiative, some 9,000 files that we process. Uh, it's definitely, definitely big data. Uh, and to date has saved the country about two billion pounds. Uh, <laughs> the, the guy who runs it is sat in front of me now. So <clears throat> he came to us, Mark, he came to us as a student placement about a thousand years ago. And uh, he came back afterwards 
we were trying to get him and he was working at nights in Tesco's, you know, to earn some money in his year and we wondered whether he was going to come back to us and we were very pleased to see he was wearing a white shirt but we could see that underneath he'd got a Synectic Solutions t-shirt shining through so we took that as a good sign and uh, he's still here to know today. Uh, we bought our first building in Newcastle under Lyme uh, and we ended up sooner or later with three of them and we got two major data centres there. Uh, 2002 we started in the private sector looking at fraud uh, and we now have over 100 banks and building societies, insurance companies who we uh, uh, who use our systems to fight fraud. Uh, our business with the automotive industry continued and we now have Toyota as a major user in 15 European countries. The private sector fraud stuff went overseas to Australia first of all and in Canada for many years all 30 major Canadian banks use our system and we're tippy-toeing into the over the last couple of years into the USA. We made a major decision and we built our third data center. Our first two data centers were about a mile apart and people used to moan a bit that it wasn't quite good for disaster recovery you know what if the plane lands on one and bounces onto the other but so we've solved that problem because our, our third data centre is in Washington, D.C., which gives us about 3,000 miles worth of gold. Uh, we got increasingly, we got to the buildings, got increasingly difficult to manage the growth. And the gods shone upon us, and, uh, and a little light took us to Burslem, of all places, where the co op many years ago had built a hypermarket. They'd moved that out uh, 10 years before us. And, and there was now the co-op travel. Well, the co-op travel went. Anyway, the beauty of that was it gave us a chance to bring all our people together again under one roof. It had the advantage of 450 car parking spaces. Car parking at all was a nightmare for stuff. So that went away for a little while. Uh, it's already been mentioned, I think Ian mentioned it, uh, that we're now, it was not just Carol and me anymore, there's, 350 odd of them, God help us. And um, this afternoon, as was said, we're having a tea party with all of them, all of them, to celebrate this amazing honour that we've been given. Because we see it very much as a, as a reflection of all the students, or not students, not students, all the staff and everybody now, not just us really. Uh, we wouldn't be here without those guys. As has been said, many of them come from the uni. Uh, We've always offered industrial placements and we've employed many grads, a few here today, aren't there? Change, change, change. We live, you know, my granddad lived through that change. This is all of our services which we run the business on today would not have been possible 25 years ago when we started the company up. So we, we've ridden the wave of the, whoa, 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 the world wide web. Uh, we now, you can never stop, change is ongoing. We're now experimenting the, about the commercial possibilities of things like augmented reality. To conclude, I've got a very simple message. Change always equals opportunity for someone. Major change equals major opportunities. And it's up to you guys to go and seize them. Thank you very much. Good morning. As you can hear from the um, speech that's already been said, it, it was two very different journeys um, for Kevin and myself up until uh, starting Synectic Solutions. I'm going to be a bit careful now because Kevin's brother and sister are in the front row, so I'm going to studiously un uh, avoid their eye contact. But when Kevin uh, did his degree, and he was a little bit of a disappointment Fair to say, to his family, uh, because he'd only got one degree. His brother's got a PhD, his sister's got more degrees than you can shake a stick at. And uh, she married a chap who went off and became a professor. So they did academia. Kevin didn't. Kevin did his degree and then went into trade. Um, but he's done pretty well out of trade. And he's now completed the circle today by getting the highest accolade within academia. So I count him as the winner. <laughs> My start was a lot different. 
And this isn't an X Factor sub story, or if it is, I'm not going to bore you with it. Um, but I had um, a very troubled education. I had um, what we called a broken home, uh, which was always a ridiculous phrase. Um, but my parents lived in other sides of the country, and I moved from one school to the other. And I left school with nothing, absolutely no qualifications whatsoever. And I'd been the biggest frustration to the school that you can ever imagine. I look back with horror. Um, but I was there, I was 17, and I had nothing. And so I went to my friend and I asked her, she worked in a, an employment agency, and I asked her what job she'd got. And she went through these cards, and then she came to a card for a mainframe operator. I said, oh, I fancy that. I didn't know what one was. I said, oh, yeah, that, that sounds really good. And she said, Carol, it's no good. She said, they want a man, because believe it or not, they could stipulate in those days. They wanted over 18, five O levels, two A levels, experience, and a driver. I said, that's all right. She said, Carol, you're 17, you've got no experience, you've got no qualifications, uh, you can't drive, and you're a woman. I said, well... If you're any good at your job, you'll get me a, an interview. Well, she was very good at her job, and she got me an interview at Hoskin Systems. And I had two hours trying to convince them with what you will be able to convince people very easily. Because you have, today, got a degree which shows that you are bright, that you can apply yourself, and you can achieve. I only had my mouth, and a two hours, and I had to tap dance. And... It, Earlier this week, Kate, my daughter down here, and myself went to an Institute of Directors um, session about branding. And there was a whole session about personal branding. We all have our own personal brand. Now, you guys are very techy, and this is a bit esoteric, so you're going to have to work with me on this. But you've all got your own personal brand. And your brand is what you take out into the world, how you display yourself, how you sell yourself. Now, your brand has taken a big leap today because your brand now includes... Oh, and by the way, I'm a graduate from Staffs Uni. But if you think yours has taken a leap, mine has gone through the roof. <laughs> so I'm OK. Um, but this brand is your value set. It's what you will do, what you won't do. Now, you've had a lot of time at university. And as well as learning on the technical side, you've also been learning about yourself and you've been putting together that brand, and that's what you're gonna be taking out now to, to get those jobs, um, and it's gonna be good. My brand, I had to sort of start with nothing and look at what my brand was, and I came to the conclusion that I really like problem solving. I was, um, as well as a mainframe operator, I then became a developer. Um, even at my age, I was a developer back in the day, and I loved it, I love bug, um, uh, looking for bugs and solving those. I love it when, I don't know, a system goes wrong and you put it right, right when a client's got problems and you go and solve those. A department's fallen off the rails and you go and get it back. I love that. I love making a difference by something not being right and working to make it okay. That's part of me. I also love people and I love bringing people together to help that. And the word synectics means the coming together of people of different skills to solve a common problem. That's my brand. That is exactly what I do, um, when, which is why it was such a perfect um, name for, for our company. And the values that we've lived by about putting people before profit. You know, don't get me wrong, profit's great. You need profit. But you need your people right first. And if you get your people right, the profit will follow. If you pursue the profit, you won't necessarily get the people right. It's got to be that way around. So my message today, I've got a couple of messages. One is that it's a huge achievement. This isn't some schmucky degree that you've got. It's a good one. And it's not some schmucky university. It's one of the best. That's why we chose to, to set our business here. That's why we've got our two graduates here from back in the day, 20 odd years ago now, and they're two of our leading lights on our uh, leadership team. And we've got Staffordshire graduates throughout our, our company. To begin with, I'd only employ graduates. There was me with one over in English. Oh, you're not coming to me unless you're a graduate. Uh, the irony was never lost on me. Um, but it's what set our company up to be so good because we employ people like you. There's three of you in there who are Synectic staff 
and you'll get a whoop when you come up. And there's also somebody who's joining us. I'm not going to embarrass you by saying the names, but we know who you are, um, who's joining us in July. And we're absolutely delighted that the class of 2017 are coming to Synectics again. Now, I've got a final message that I really want to talk about. Well, two, really. One, I am so honoured, so honoured to get this degree and shocked. My father used to say to me, you don't want to get ideas above your station, Carol. That was it. I mean, if my dad was alive today, I mean, I've had ideas above my space station, let alone, you know, any other station. This is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to the university for giving Kevin and myself this. And I shall take this back to Burslem. Um, which is where we are and where we've become very much part of the community. Last night I spoke to the Port Vale Supporters Club. You lot are a doddle in comparison to the Port Vale Supporters Club. Um, but I will take it to Burslem and to the Port Vale Foundation Trust, where I'm now acting chair, to talk to the young and to tell them, like me, not to be limited by the limited message, by the um, messages that you are sometimes given in the in your youth, which tells you that you can't achieve highly, you can. Today, proves that absolutely. I'm so grateful. And finally, it's been an amazing week having this, and we've been really excited, haven't we? And on Monday, we got to go to the Chancellor's dinner, and being um, honorary graduates, we got to sit at top table, which was marvellous. I loved it. Now, I do agree that what goes on at top table stays at top table, so I'm not going to tell you everything, but there was one bit that really got to me, and I thought, I'm going to share this, because they began to talk about graduation celebrations. Now, they've done a lot. They know what they're talking about. And I've only done my daughters, so I didn't have any clue to, to balance this by. But they were telling, they were talking to each other and saying that the creative arts degrees whoop most. And they make the most noise. And they make the biggest atmosphere. And maybe this was because they speculated they were very creative people. And they were very highly strung. And they got very excitable. And I thought, well, hang on. Computing's very creative. We're all creative in here. And we get excitable. Game of Thrones is starting next week. Come on. We're going to get excited. And we can get a bit highly strung, just like the creative ones. So what I want you to do today is really celebrate what you've done, because I'm going to be celebrating what I've done too, but celebrate each other as well. And whoop. And I'm talking Julia Roberts in Pretty Woman, you know, and the racing, and she really embarrasses herself. That's fine. Do that. Yesterday, evidently, they were clapping and they were stamping their feet. Do that, because this is phenomenal what you've achieved. Well done. And thank you.